Wits University is determined to get its academic program back on track despite repeated disruptions to learning and teaching on campus. The school's senior management team sent a late, circular, a late evening circular rather, to students informing them of the decision to continue classes today. The circular acknowledges the dangerous situation on campus characterized by violent clashes between students and the police and have ceded operational control of security now to the South African Police Service. The police are expected to deploy their own personnel to individual buildings. Meanwhile, National Police Commissioner Homoto Patlane has promised to arrest any individuals involved in criminal activity. The Yale Road North and South will remain open this morning, but the Enoch Sontonga Gate will be closed. The statement says the university is in support of free, fully funded, quality, decolonized higher education, but management also noted they were unable to give students free education at this moment. We're joining us now on the line for spokesperson Sharona Patel. Sharona, good morning to you. A very, very difficult day yesterday. In terms of this late circular, just uh, reiterate what the main points are in terms of uh, openings and closings of gates at the university today. Good morning. Uh, yes, so despite it being a difficult and challenging day yesterday, we still managed to get through just uh, over half of the classes across our campuses. Um, although attendance was quite low in some classes, uh, we felt that it was important to continue with the academic program, and it's for that reason that we will uh, continue to open today. Now, this morning, in, uh, the police will manage all security operations on a building-by-building -building basis. That means that they will uh, protect each building, have people both outside and inside the buildings, and uh, they have a security plan for that. The gates that will be open in Brompton will be only the Yale Road North and South gates. Um, this may cause some backup in the traffic, um, and we apologize to people for that inconvenience, but it's the only way in which we can manage access to the campuses. Mm. So the open gates will be where? It's Yale Road North and Yale Road South. So people know it as the, M the one closest to Empire Road and the one closest to the Origin Center at Wits. Um, the Inox Tonga one, which is more on the Brompton South side, will remain closed um, for this morning at least. How are we doing in terms of uh, negotiation processes at this stage? Yeah, that, that's a, a good question. You know, we yesterday, our Dean of Students went to, to the student leaders and said, choose 20 representatives, anyone who you feel will represent you, and let them meet with management. But the students refused. Um, on the second one, we said, we're happy to host an imbezo. Let's get an independent facilitator, and uh, let's talk through this. Let's find some uh, common ground. Um, and the, the students have refused that as well. So I think that um, we, we are trying both informally. We've sent formal letters to the SRC, which we can show people. But um, they're refusing to come to the table to negotiate and to talk. Basically, they're saying that they don't have um, a fight with the universities. Their fight is a national fight with uh, the state. They want free education now from government. And until that happens, they want all universities to shut down. Mm. Now, that's not something that WITS or any other university can accede to. Mm. Uh, Sharona, just uh, on one other issue, um, uh, the EFF in Gauteng have re released a statement saying they're urging all available revolutionary ground of the EFF mother bodies uh, to support the free education uh, this morning. Uh, your comments on that, it seems as though it may be coming a political issue now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really don't want to comment on any of the politics behind it. All I can say is that our big security is aware of that, and they have alerted the police to that notice as well. So they will take that into consideration today uh, when they uh, uh, into the security plan for the remainder of the day. Um, the politics behind it, I mean, there are several student groups that we are trying to deal with, and that's what's made it more difficult this year. So while we've got the SRC, who's the uh, official representative body of the students, um, there are several other student societies that we're liaising with, um, as well as the Postgraduate Students Association, the All Race Council. There's about six to eight different groups, um, and that will, that's what's making trying to negotiate so difficult as well. But at this stage, they are all, despite the groupings, they all have just the one demand, which is free decolonized higher education now from the state. Um, and 
you, you know, the best way to resolve this is through um, a, a, some sort of a negotiated settlement. Uh, we've offered to get the right people around the table, whether it's from the ministry, the, the state, government, the private sector, to try to resolve this matter. But the students have declined. So at this stage, they are not open to engagement. In your views, I mean, is it a sense of that uh, you think they're just not willing to, to go back to varsity under any circumstances? Well, the only the only way they will go back to class is if they get free education mm. now. Mm. And th th that's the one demand. I mean, I spoke to some of the leaders yesterday myself and I asked them, you know, are there any um, internal issues within the university that we can negotiate through, etc.? And they said, no, they've all just got this one demand. And until it's not met, they will try to shut down all universities in the country. Mm. Shirana, just sorry, looking at uh, some of the instant, uh, incidents yesterday, uh, we're looking at visuals of that bus that was burnt, but this was off the campus. In terms of uh, now relinquishing all security to the police, will you still have uh, your own private security there, or have you relinquished everything to the SAPS? Uh, so the police will work with private security. We don't have enough police and we don't have enough private security, so we need to use a combination of the two, as well as our own campus controlled security. Uh, we feel we need to use them better as well because they understand what it's like to work with students on a daily basis. And um, it also helps to de-escalate the violence if we use our own campus uh, controlled security. So we'll use a combination of that and they've worked out a plan on exactly what the right mix is. Mm. The difficulty with that is that, yes, when the uh, police uh, services come onto campus and when you hand over operations to them, it means that you don't have control. So as Wits University, um, as, as the police have their own chain of command mm. and so they don't answer to us. And, and that's what makes it difficult. Whereas with the private security or with security, at least uh, we can control it to some measure. In this instance, it's in the hands of the police. Mm. In terms of uh, uh, the students uh, on campus, obviously yesterday uh, uh, the sort of violence spilled over into Bramfontein. And it was a clear, you could see it on our visuals, uh, that these weren't all students. I mean, these, this became an, an element of, uh, of thuggery, an element of vandalism. Uh, are you confident that all the people being let onto the campus are all students? Uh, yeah, so we had that issue last week um, where we had, I think it was last Wednesday, where we had the clashes with the police. When we went back and looked at that footage, we realized that one of the access gates had been breached near the church in Bramfontein, and we had a stream of people coming in straight from Bramfontein onto the campus. Mm. It's for that reason that we put in strict access control measures. Uh, we're now checking people who are coming in in vehicles, in buses. If they don't have a student card or a staff card, um, then they won't be allowed on, onto campus. And so we've gone very strict with that. Uh, the police have also indicated today that anyone uh, who will either wear masks over their face, balaclavas, or, or who are carrying weapons, etc., um, 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 will be taken to task and help be held accountable as well. And they've also said anyone involved in criminal activity will be arrested. A very difficult time, Sharana. Uh, uh, your overall thoughts? I mean, it's, it must be, yeah. uh, you know, take us into these boardrooms. It's a, it's a very difficult yeah. time. It, it is a difficult time, but, you know, we've got no other choice. Uh, we remain committed to finishing this academic year, and we remain committed to having exams written. And I think those are the two driving factors for why we will try to stay open for as long as we can. We need about two weeks to complete the academic program in full, and then um, we've got a contingency plan, uh, plan for examinations as well. And if we can just get through the next two weeks, uh, we feel that um, we'd be able to complete this 2016 academic year. But despite what happens, I think that's our commitment. We owe it to the majority of students who want to be in class and who want to pass. And, and you know, the, the repercussions, if we shut down, are, are enormous. Mm. Uh, we're playing with 37,000 lives, families here. People can lose their funding, their NISFAS, their scholarships, their bursaries. We can't take in new applicants. You know, we've got 75,000 new applicants for next year for 7,000 places. Um, and and the, re the repercussions are huge. So we remain at the stage committed to finishing the 2016 academic year and writing exams. Sharana, thanks as always for chatting to us this morning. On the line there, uh, VIT spokesperson Sharana Patel.